Hello everyone, Mr. Clark here with a video lesson today about Algebra Basics. Okay, before we get started, remember that as you watch my video lessons, you can pause the video anytime you get confused or I'm going too fast. Please pause it. Also remember that you can stop anytime and rewind a little bit. Okay, so if I say something that's a little confusing to you, Try to stop the video, go back a little bit, listen to it again, see if you can make sense out of it. Watch the examples I do a couple of times, right? Take the time to really learn it. You'll, this is one of the big advantages of video lessons is that you can control the pace, okay? Also, always remember after you're done with the video, when you're going to do your assignment, that you want to... Um, Show your work on paper, okay? Do your assignment on paper, write it with a pencil. It's too hard to do it on the computer, okay? I want to see your work. This is math class, gotta see your work. Once you're done, take a picture of it and attach it to the assignment. Don't send it to me in a video, I mean, I'm sorry, in an email or some other way. I've gotta have it attached so that I can keep track of it. Okay, I can't keep track of it if you send it to me in an email, all of a sudden your work is in two different places, okay? So attach it to your assignment. All right, on we go with today's video assignment. Again, it is on Algebra Basics, and the two Algebra Basics we're covering today are variables and inverse operations. Okay, variables and inverse operations. Here we go. Okay, we're going to start with some vocabulary. And here's an interesting statement. Math class is an English class. Yes, it is. We are learning new uh, words, okay? New concepts, and there are new words that go with them. So you can expect new words and new ways of communicating our ideas. One of the most amazing things about math is all the fantastic information that can be communicated very precisely. Well, often we need new words to describe these fantastic ideas and be able to talk to other people about them. It's important we have these new big words. Some of these words are big, but with a little effort, you can learn them. It's fun. I like to uh, use big words and sound like I know what I'm talking about. It's, it's a lot of fun. Okay? So we're going to learn these new words. If you stick to it, I know you can too. All right. So every lesson, or most every lesson that we have, will start with some vocabulary. And here's today's vocabulary. We're going to learn the words variable, algebraic operation, and inverse operation. Okay? Those are our three new vocabularies. Notice they're in purple. Later in the lesson, when you see these words for the first time, when we define them, it'll be in purple. All right, so we're looking for the definition of variable, algebraic operation, and inverse operation. Variables, you should remember this from uh, Algebra 1, but here's a review in case you don't. A variable is a placeholder for a number or value. So if I say x equals 6, that means any time. I, or I've declared x as a variable, and I've given it a value of 6. All right, so in the above example, we are told or given that x is 6. Therefore, anywhere from now on I see an x, I know that it's the number 6. Okay. A variable always represents a single value. In other words, if we say that x is 6, it can't be some other number. It's now 6. All right. However, we can treat a variable as any number. It doesn't have to be 6. Okay? But once we assign it a value, that's the only value that it is. Okay? <clears throat> if it hasn't been assigned a value, then it could be any number. We don't know. Next up, algebraic operations. What are algebraic operations? Well, for one thing, that's a big word for a very simple concept. All right? We'll have a lot of big words in this class. All right. 
We can have, we can talk about rain and how we can call it multiple different things. Mist, drizzle, downpour, but they all basically mean the same thing. All right? Algebraic operations are actions that we can do with numbers. All right? And you're familiar with a lot of these. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Those are all algebraic operations. That's what I mean by an algebraic operation. I can add numbers together. I can subtract them. Okay. We also have exponentiation. That's a big word for just roots, or I'm sorry, powers, right? And then roots also is another operation. Okay? And from now on, you may hear me say algebraic operations, or you may hear me just say operations. You know, if I talk about these two operations, we know we're talking about algebraic operations, okay? In this class. All right, an inverse operation, there's another purple word, of an operation. So we have inverse operation of an operation. It's a second operation that undoes the original operation. For example, subtraction is the inverse operation of addition. All right, here's an example. 6 plus 2 equals 8. It's pretty simple, right? We all know that. We start with the... Number 6, add 2 to it, and we get 8. How would we get back to our original number of 6? Right? Well, I would subtract out what I added. I added 2. Let's subtract 2. 6 minus, or 6 plus 2 minus 2. We can see that these two 2's, right, plus 2 and minus 2, those turn into zero, right? Those go away and turn into zero. And we get back to six. We get back to our original value. Okay? So that means that addition and subtraction are inverse operations. Because I can add two and subtract two and they undo each other. All right? Multiplication and divisions are also inverse operations. What does that mean? If I want to undo a multiplication, I use division. Look, I started with a 4, multiplied it by 5, and got 20. How would I take that 20 and get back to 4? I would divide. I can take that 20, right? Divide it by the same number that I multiplied it by, and I get back to my original value, right? 4 times 5 equals 20. Take that 20 and divide it by the 5, and you get back to your original value of 4. That means multiplication and division undo each other. They're inverse operations. Inverse, by the way, just kind of means opposite. So they're opposite of each other in a way. Okay? So multiplying by 4, or multiplying 4 by 5 gives you 20, but then undoing that, you divide that 20 by the same value you multiplied it by, 5, and you get the original value of 4. Okay? Hope that makes sense. If not, get with me in tutorials. Exponents and roots are inverse operations of each other as well. If I take 3 and I square it, right, take it to the second power, I get 9. And then if I take that number 9 and take the square root, square root means the second root, right? It's like there's an invisible 2 here. The square root of 9 gives me 3. I get back to where I started. Right? Take the original value 3 to the power of 2, and I get 9. I take that 9 then and square root it, which is like doing the second power or second root of 9. I get back to my original value of 3. Okay? Later in this course, we'll introduce other pairs of inverse operations, but that's later day. Okay? On the previous three slides, 
we said that addition is the inverse of subtraction. This means that addition is the inverse of subtraction, but also that subtraction is the inverse of addition. It works both ways. If I wanted to, right, I start with 11 and subtract 4, I get 7. True? If I take this 7, my result of that subtraction, and then instead of subtracting 4, I add 4, I get back to my original value, 11. The, the addition undid the subtraction. So not only is addition the inverse of subtraction, but subtraction is the inverse of addition. It works both ways. Same with division and multiplication, right? If I take my original value of 12 and divide it by 6, I get 2. If I take that result, multiply it by the same thing I divided by, 2 times 6, I get back to my original value. They undid each other, so multiplication is the inverse of division, same as division is the inverse of multiplication. Okay? Same with powers and roots and other inverse operations we're going to do later in the course. All right, that's the end of this lesson. Please do the associated assignment with it. Thanks for your attention.